Hey everybody, James Chopping with Love My Pops, My Breeder Supply. So today's video is gonna be on the negative stuff, things that can go wrong. What can go wrong? What can you do to prevent it? What do you do to diagnose it? What do you do to fix it when it has gone wrong? And so, um, you know, I'm gonna start from the very beginning part of trying to breed a dog through the pregnancy, having puppies, problems with puppies and mum afterwards. So we're gonna try and go through the whole thing. So hopefully we won't run too long on this. Okay, so, um, now first thing is we've gotta do is we've gotta get the dog pregnant. So there can be problems with getting a dog pregnant. So, so what are those problems? Well, obviously if you've got a dog that's not healthy on either the stud or the, or the female, get the dog healthy. So that's the first thing. If you're not sure if your dog's healthy, go to the vet. If a dog's happy running around, eating food, generally a happy dog, then I wouldn't bother going to the vet. It's a healthy dog. All right, so first thing, healthy dogs. The next thing, timing. You've got to get your timing right to get a successful litter. If you get your timing wrong, the window of opportunity for this is measured in a couple of days either side of optimum. So what you're looking for is a progesterone level of five is a dog that is ovulating, which is typically around day nine. A dog that's ovulating, typically its discharge color will have gone from red to more of a pinky color. That dog should be bred two days later. A normal dog would be bred typically between day 11 and day 13. Progesterone tests, AI on a 15, surgical AI on a 20. I've got other videos on that stuff. But get your timing right. If you get timing wrong, you're either gonna have a very small litter or you're not gonna have any puppies at all. So, timing, fundamental. So then the next thing is, of course, you have to have quality semen. You've got to make sure that the stud, you know, it, it, that the stud is producing semen that's going to be viable to get the dog pregnant. Uh, again, you're probably going to have to enlist a vet or your breeder to let you know that that is, in fact, you've got good semen. All right. And there's a whole other videos on how to collect from dogs and ship dogs. If you're doing a mating locally, then you're not shipping. Again, there's videos on that. Okay. So then, not what's the next thing that happened? Split heat. So this happens typically in younger dogs. I see this mostly in dogs that are a year to a year and a half old, where they start the whole process, they're dripping blood, you think you're getting things right, you're ready to do an uh, insemination, and you don't realize it, but their progesterone level, and we'll just do a quick graph here. So what we've got here is progesterone level is on this side, and this is days of heat. Day one is first drops of blood, most dogs get bred around day nine, excuse me, they're ovulated around day nine, and they get bred somewhere between day 11 and 13. They get bred here. So if you look at the progesterone level, the level's pretty low for the first five days, and it slowly rises up to a level of five about day nine, that's ovulation. And then after that, it goes really quickly, eight and 10 and 15, it goes up really quickly, I and mean, you're up here really quickly, it goes up really quickly. But what happens in a split heat dog is, uh, I want to give another color, I'm not really well equipped here today. Well, on a split heat dog, I don't have another color to show you, we'll just do this. On a split heat dog, what happens is this all starts going up, and then the whole thing dies back down, or stays at a certain level, and then it starts up again. So you bred the dog here, but you should have bred the dog about four or five or six or eight or 10 days later. On a split heat, split heats can be, the dog can kind of completely go out of heat and start back up again, or it may just stall out. But the only way, you know, if you've got to do a progesterone test to find out. So if you're having problems breeding a dog, it could be split heats. All right. Okay, so now, now we've bred the dog. What can happen during the actual um, uh, pregnancy itself? Well, one thing that can happen right away is a thing called a prolapse. A prolapse is where the vagina itself is sticking out of the dog. So when a dog goes into heat, it gets really puffy at its back end and it's swollen up. Most dogs, not all, but most dogs get pretty puffy. Some dogs will actually, the actual vagina will start to come out of the back end of the dog. And you can actually have a thing the size of a fist hanging out there. It looks like a bloody orange. And that is a prolapse. So a prolapse now, this is something that you've got to pay attention to. If you, you can still breed a dog with a prolapse. I've do bred dogs successfully with a prolapse. But you've got to get that stuff back inside the dog. If you don't, then the outside wall of the vagina, the inside wall of the vagina, which is now sticking outside the dog, will get dry and crusty and could get infected. You've basically got to push all that stuff back in there and make it stay inside the dog. If it won't stay inside the dog, you put a stitch in the dog's vulva to hold it in place. 
Um, I and, and typically prolapses show up when a dog is going into heat. That's the time that you'll see prolapses. It doesn't happen very often. And I, as I said, I've successfully bred dogs with prolapses. But you definitely got to go get a prolapse sorted out, which means probably a trip to the vet. Um, a dog that's prolapsed could also prolapse when it's having babies. So for us with French Bulldogs, we're doing C-sections, and that typically avoids that problem. We don't get to that point. But if you're having a dog that's gonna do a natural whelp and it prolapsed when you mated the dog, be prepared for a prolapse at the other end, and that could be a problem because she could start to telescope her vagina out. And I've never been in that situation, so I really don't have any good advice on that. But just be aware that that could happen. And it may be, maybe that one should consider having a C-section on a dog that had a prolapse during mating to avoid the prolapse at whelp. Okay. Um, so another one is pyometria, or some kind of uterine infection. So what happens is when the dog is bred, the uterus beforehand is closed up. You can't get into the uterus. When the dog is in heat at the, at the right time to be bred, the cervix opens up a little bit and that allows the semen to get in. But it also allows other things to get into the uterus. So specifically, when you're doing an AI, make sure that you've got new rods, new syringes, fresh gloves, you clean off the, the, the vulva of the dog before you do an AI, keep things as sterile as you can because you could introduce something into the uterus that would then cause a uterine infection. So how do you tell if you've got a uterine infection? Well, so the signs are gonna be a dog that might be peeing frequently, uh, a dog that is uh, uh, not eating or a dog that's very thirsty, uh, a dog that has a discharge, a dog that is uh, a bit smelly on its back end, doesn't pass the sniff, sniff, sniff test, and a dog that has a temperature. So what do I do? Any time that I think I've ever got a problem with any kind of an animal, the very f including myself, the very first thing I do is what, Russ? Take a bath. <laughs> Take your temperature. So you've got this, you know, you've got, I don't know if I've got a thermometer in here or not, but basically, you know, if you don't have a thermometer, go spend five bucks and buy one at Walmart. Go buy a little electronic thermometer. I was gonna show you what I use, but I don't think I've got one here. And, yeah, I do, I've got one right here. Yeah, here we go. Comes with our puppy care kit. If you don't have a thermometer, go get yourself, and I like the ones with the rubber tips because it's less likely to hurt a dog. Get a thermometer. This is such a useful look. If you ever call me up and you've got a problem with a dog, the very first thing I'll ask you is what's his temperature? So what is the correct temperature of a dog? The answer is for an adult dog, something less than 102. So typically you'll measure a dog's temperature at something around 101, 101 and a half. Anything over 102, trip to the vet. Don't muck around. So it's, then it's probably time to find out what's really going on. And if they've got some kind of a vaginal infection, it's definitely time for antibiotics. So, but again, the first thing that you can do is always go take your dog's temperature. Any kind you have a problem, take his temperature. If it has a temperature of 102 or higher, time to go to the vet. Uh, all right, so that's uh, pyometria, okay. Um, all right, so then I've got some little notes here that I just need to have a look at, put my glasses on, see what I wrote down. Okay, so what are the next things that happen? Well, you may see some spotting. So I get people who call me up and say, hey, my dog's, you know, she's pregnant, she is, three, four, five weeks into it. So what are you gonna see during this day one you bred the dog, and 61 days, 63 days later that you have the whelp, uh, or 61 days later actually from AI that you have the whelp. What can you expect to see? Well, dogs that are maiden dogs, never had a litter before, their nipples are very small beforehand, and their nipples will grow, and typically that's a great sign that you've got a pregnancy going on. So size of nipples is a good indicator that you've got a pregnancy. Um, a dog that's behavior changes. They may go through morning sickness. They may start vomiting. They may be off their food. They may make me eat more food. They may be very sleepy. They may be want to cuddle up with you. These are all changes that you'd see in the dog's behavior, which is to do with hormones and the dog being pregnant. They're all fine. Right, so the next one is spotting. You are in this now for you know a few weeks, three weeks, five weeks, and you start to see some blood spots on the ground. What's going on that scares you? So if you just see a few blood spots, the first thing to do is take the dog's temperature, make sure there's not something funny going on. But if you just see a few blood spots, what we do is we basically put that dog under bed rest. So we'll put that dog into a crate for the next 48 hours and don't have that dog bouncing around, don't have the dog running around, don't have the dog jumping up on your bed or your furniture because you've probably got a little tear in a placenta somewhere and it'll probably all fix itself just fine. If you see a lot of blood, time to go to the vet. 
If you see a green discharge, and I, I mean a deep green discharge, if you see that at any time during a pregnancy, that's a separated placenta, that really is an issue. And that means a, trip, a vet trip right away. It's pretty uncommon to see it, but definitely a placental, a, a green discharge is a placental tear, and that's something that really does need to be addressed. Um, because what can happen is, is that you can get a, a puppy that dies inside mum, and that can then become a septic, and you can have all kinds of problems. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to abort the, the, the whole litter, or that you have to have a C-section done right there and then, but definitely you should enlist the help of a professional. And by the way, during all of this, remember, I'm not a vet. So any information that I give you is, is free of charge, and anything that you think is not correct, definitely Google it, because I could be wrong, and uh, please don't come back and complain to me if I give you bad advice. I try to give the best advice I possibly can, but again, we're not all perfect, and I'm not a vet. All right, um, okay. Um, so green discharge, the concern, red spots on the ground, probably not, but just monitor it. Um, now you're gonna see possibly what's called a mucus plug being uh, dumped out of the dog's back end about somewhere between a week to hours before the actual well. But basically what happens here is the cervix excels has a mucus plug that stops bacteria stuff getting into the uterus. So that plug is a mucus plug and it gets, so you will see, don't always see this, but quite often you'll see a dog's gone outside to pee and you'll see this jelly-like, clear, yellowy substance, opaque substance hanging off the dog's back end, about a spoonful of it. Don't worry about that, it's just the mucus plug, that's fine. You may see it days before the whelp, you may see it hours before the whelp, it's quite normal. Um, you're ready for whelp, and you see a whole bunch of fluid come out the back end of the dog. Well, that's the water that's broken on one of the sacs. That means that you need to start having puppies pretty soon. If you're gonna have a C-section, then you, you should already have a vet lined up and you should be visiting the vet right away. It doesn't mean you have to drive at a thousand miles an hour and cause an accident, but it means that you need to get the vet in the next hour if that happens. Um, if you're having a natural, a natural whelp, then I mean, just be prepared for it because Puppies are coming fairly soon, and you should see your first puppy hopefully within an hour of that happening. And if you aren't seeing a puppy within an hour of that happening, then it may be it's time to go to a visit to the vet, find out what's going on. Um, okay, you could have a false pregnancy. So this dog may be going through this whole process where you are uh, so excited, the dog looks like it's put a bit of weight on, it's got teats, it may have some milk. Could be a false pregnancy. So I've even heard of dogs apparently can actually go into labor over a false pregnancy. So the important thing here is, is if you're gonna do a C-section, make darn sure there's puppies inside and make sure that you're not having a false pregnancy because you're gonna be really upset to open this dog up, do an unnecessary surgery with a, with a small risk to your dog and some significant risk to your wallet to find out there's no puppies inside. So if you've got a dog that you can't palpitate puppies, and you haven't done a sonogram or an x-ray, and you're not sure if it's pregnant, you don't feel puppies moving around, you can't palpitate a puppy, go have an x-ray done, make sure there's a puppy in there. Um, okay. Uh, all right, so now we're gonna start talking about the actual, how many minutes are we into this? 13. All right, good. So now we're gonna talk about the actual uh, process of taking puppies. So for us, it's French Bulldogs, so we know about those. Uh, so with French Bulldogs, I advise you to do a C-section. 85% of all Frenches are born through C-section. But there are some things you've got to watch out for here. There's two things that can, there's three outcomes on a C-section. One is that everything is beautiful. You have healthy puppies. They're born at the right time and, and life is good. The other extremes are you take them too early, you're too late and puppies start being born when you're not ready. So let's talk about the first ones, taking them too early. I see quite a bit of this. You've got to be careful. You, if you take puppies two days or more prior to when they should have been born, then they're likely to be born with what I call a slick face. They don't have much fur on their face at all. And those puppies are likely to, to not survive over the next 48 hours. What happens is they, they may be a little bit small, but their lungs have not developed correct, sufficiently for them to do the transition from being in placental fluid inside the mama to being outside and breathing air. So this is a really bad situation, and I've done this myself. I've made mistakes myself, and I have quite a few customers whose vets say, oh, well, I won't be around at the weekend. Let's do it now. That's the wrong answer. Go find yourself another vet. Go, if you take puppies early, um, you, you've got a very good chance of really getting in trouble. 
So I've got a whole video on how to time C-sections, but suffice to say, the signs you're looking for here are a progesterone level of two or less is safe, uh, uh, a dog that's temperatures dropped below 99, coupled with other signs, not eating food, panting, nesting, and has got milk. All of those signs are good signs. But go visit that video. I'm not gonna go into it here, but just don't make the mistake that quite a few people do make having puppies early, because it'll be a bad result for you. The other side of this is that you're too late and you wake up in the middle of the night and you find that you've got a stuck puppy, or a girl that's in trouble has been trying to have puppies all night long and is just exhausted. You can lose puppies for certain, and even a mother over this. So pay attention to what's going on. Be aware of when the right time, whether it be a natural whelp or a C-section, make sure you're there for your dog when the whelp's going to occur so you can do the right thing. If you don't, you could get into trouble. I would never go off to work and just leave a dog and come back in the evening, and, and I've had customers who do this, come back in the evening and there's puppies there. That's a recipe for the disaster. It might be okay, but it might not be okay. And if your dog or your puppies die, it was your fault. And that'd be a sad day. Okay. Um, and by the way, if you've got a stuck puppy, what do you do? Well, the very first thing, and we got camera for a second. The very first thing that you do is you glove up and you get yourself a tub of Vaseline. And you take a big old dollop of Vaseline. I mean a good, I don't want to do it right now, but you take a good old, you know, good old hand, you know, couple of tablespoons of Vaseline. And you get your fingers in a, in a vulva and the puppy sticking out around the puppy and get everything greased up because that can make a huge, huge difference. Uh, if you've got a puppy that's stuck, you can try to pull it out. Uh, if it's, um, I would basically call the vet up and probably head to the vet at this point. If you haven't had experience with this, then you know you can definitely, you can pull on a puppy fairly hard, but you've got to pull the right way. Basically, the way that it works is, if the dog's standing and hears its butt here, it's a downwards pull in an arc like this, is how you're pulling it. But again, that's a whole separate video. Time to go to the vet if you've got a stuck puppy. Um, okay. All right, so now let's talk about, we've got our litter on the ground, now what can go wrong? Um, Mum doesn't have any milk. Maybe because you took puppies early, maybe it's just the way she is. They should have given her, or you should give them a shot of oxytocin, which is a, uh, a hormone that causes uh, uterine contractions, it helps deliver puppies, it helps clean out uh, all the debris in a uterus that needs to be flushed out, and it helps with milk letdown. So oxytocin is the thing that you give, and you should, any vet who's doing a C-section will, I think, always give a shot of oxytocin. Um, if she doesn't have milk, then you can give another shot of oxytocin, and I, again, this is the, under the vet's uh, control here, but I think you've got probably 24 hours to give maybe a couple of shots. It's not very much, maybe like half a cc, depending on the dog's weight. Get your vet involved in this, but basically if you don't have milk, go get some milk, goat's milk. Goat's milk and a good old human being, baby bottle, zero to three months with a silicone nipple. It looks huge, but it works great. So warm goat's milk, that's the recipe. You can get milk replacer, that's fine too. If you really run into problems, then you can go get a feeding tube and you can feed, to, feed, feed your puppies the feeding tube got videos and all that um, and if you've got puppies that are having problems by the way then there is nothing like an incubator to keep puppies going so we manufacture these my breeder supply you can set the temperature we set them to exactly 40 degrees which makes for a nice beautifully warm environment this one here has not been cleaned out yet there's a little light in here the floor of this thing is just a beautiful 40 degrees which is 140 degrees Fahrenheit uh, it doesn't doesn't he heat the air up with fans and heaters, so it doesn't dehydrate puppies. Uh, we swear by this. Our puppies are born, they go straight to this box in the uh, uh, operating room. They come home in the car in this. And if we have puppies that are struggling, small puppies or puppies that need extra care, they go in that, maybe for the first 10 days of their life. But, uh, all right, so milk. If you haven't got milk, puppies need to be fed. Right, what's the next thing you should be doing? You should be weighing your puppies every day. Make a chart. Weigh your puppies, know each puppy individually, know that it's gaining half an ounce of weight or more every day after the first day. They'll lose weight the first 24 hours, after that they need to be gaining weight. Puppies that are quiet, puppies that have nice full bellies, puppies that suckle when you put their, your finger in the mouth, they are signs that you are on the right track and all is good with the world. A puppy that is cold, a puppy that won't suckle on your finger, a puppy that has a collapsed stomach, those are all 
they're pending problems that you need to take care of immediately. So the first thing to do in any of these situations is get the puppy warmed up. Don't feed it milk yet, get it warmed up. If you've got an incubator, it goes to the incubator. If you don't have an incubator, then go get some uh, heaters, or maybe you can even heat up some rice bags in a microwave or a towel in, the, uh, in your dryer and get that puppy warmed up. Um, when they're born, check puppies for cleft palates. A cleft palate is where you have an opening, but uh, you can have an opening, you know, we call that, um, what do you call that on a, on a human being, Russ, when you have a little hair, hair lip, there you go. A hair lip is the beginning of a cleft palate. A hair lip, where you just have a gap in the lip that's not closed up, is not a problem. That can be fixed later. But if that goes on all the way through, in the top of their palate, and all the way to the back, where you've got an opening in the back of their, top of their palate, that puppy is probably not gonna survive. And the only way you're gonna get that puppy going would be to tube feed it, and probably, you'll probably have a heartache with this. It probably will get a sinus infection, the problem is with a gap in its mouth, it's not able to suckle. It can't produce a vacuum because there's a hole between the top of its mouth and its nose. So when it sucks like this, it doesn't suck at all. Air just goes in its nose. It can't suckle. So check the cleft palates where they're born. Um, the, you know, if you have a whole litter of cleft palate dogs, then you've got to think about some hereditary condition going on. But the normal situation is occasionally you come across a head, cleft palate. It's just the way that it is. And, and we, we don't take those puppies home. We just let them, uh, we, we give them a shot right there at the, and it's a pretty rare thing, and it's, you feel really bad when you do it, but I'm gonna tell you, I've tried to save cleft palate puppies, and uh, I've never been successful. I've tried it a few times over the last 15 years, and it's always ended up in heartache. Um, okay. Um, okay, let's see what else we've got going on here. So, yeah, it can be problems with uh, nursing, where mum doesn't want to nurse puppies, doesn't want to clean them up. Um, we have a, a whelping system that I think you should look at, but basically you can put your puppies with mum 24-7 for the first three weeks of their life in this, you can just pan over this way here real quickly, Russ. This is basically heat tape that goes on the bottom of a crate. It produces heat, it's temperature controlled just around the periphery of the crate. The puppies migrate to the heat, they are underneath a pig rail where they're very safe. We leave puppies in there 24-7 in that environment. Some people want to take puppies away and just give the puppies to mum for a half an hour to feed every two or three hours. Um, you can run into problems with this, where mum all of a sudden doesn't like you taking the puppies away, uh, wants to gut all the puppies around her and won't let you do it, or she rejects the puppies. Uh, we don't do this. We let our dogs get on with uh, looking after the puppies. If you've got a dog that's being aggressive towards the dog's puppies, and you've got a problem, and one thing you could do is you can put a cone on their face. I've never done it, never had to do this. Frenchies typically don't have problems with this, but other dogs can. You can put a cone around them where they can't physically get to a puppy. So you can muzzle a dog, you can put a muzzle around the dog, so physically you can take its tongue out, they can lick on a dog, and maybe you can drink some water, but it can't bite a dog, it can't open its mouth up enough. So if you've got a dog that's got aggressive behavior, then a couple of things. One is I think about breeding that dog in the future possibly, especially if you have a, a, a problem with the litter, but definitely some kind of mechanical device to stop the dog from biting. Alright, um, okay, so she just rejects the puppies and won't feed them or she has no milk. Well, you know, if you don't get her to accept the puppies within the first 48 hours, you're probably going to be raising this litter by yourself. And so that's a tough situation. So I would work hard towards trying to get her to look after her puppies. Um, I, I think a lot of this sometimes happens when you're taking puppies early and there's no milk and the whole thing's a bit distressing for mum. So, I'm not sure that it's always that way, but I think that uh, it, you know, be careful about taking puppies early because you can have all kinds of complications. Um, all right, so problems with puppies. Um, all right, so puppies that start to get, mum's got lots of milk, you get one or two fat puppies in there. Uh, the other puppies are starting to move around pretty good, but those puppies are just swimming around. They don't get up on the legs at all, they're just swimming like this. And what happens is they get fat like little walruses, and they get flat chests. In situations like that, when they get to the point where they should be getting up on their legs, which is something around maybe 10 days old, eyes are open, I take their legs up, take their back legs together, and that'll get them up on there, that'll get them up where they can't crawl around that way. I've got a whole video on taping legs. So if you've got swimmer puppies, fix it early, it will go away. If you don't fix it early, they'll have flat chests and have a problem. Uh, puppies' ears stand up. So if their ears start to flip back down, then take their ears up. That will sort that problem out. Typically, if you catch it early, within a few days. Got a video on that. 
Um, puppies, what should you be doing with your puppies? You should be checking your puppy's weight every day. A puppy that is gaining half an ounce after the first day, first day to lose some weight, after the first day, puppies need to gain half an ounce a day. If a puppy's not gaining half an ounce a day, then there's a problem. Go find out what that problem is. If the whole lid is not gaining half an ounce a day, maybe you've got a problem with milk on the mum. Uh, mum's milk. Um, if you've got a dog that has really lots of milk and not very many puppies nursing on it, you can get a nipple that's not getting serviced at all. And that nipple can get hard and warm and get what's called mastitis. So mastitis is basically where the milk has started to get rotten inside the, the, the breast and you've got to express it. So how do you do that? You get a warm towel on it and you start working that nipple and getting milk out of it and even putting a puppy on it to get the milk out of it. You've got to get that nipple going. If you don't do that, then she's likely to start running a fever. She could get an ulcer in here. She could go septic. She could even die over it. So the cure for this is to get on top of it if you've got one nipple that's getting hard, get after it right away, start working that nipple, and if you do that, you'll probably save the day. Um, eclampsia, milk fever. This is when a dog is not got enough calcium, and what happens is, is that uh, produced milk requires quite a bit of calcium, and so its calcium intake is not enough, and the dog can get eclampsia, milk fever, and it will actually physically have a temperature, and the dog will get sick, and it'll stop nursing puppies. So watch out for that one. The fix for that one is, is uh, well, what we do is we give um, things like cottage cheese on food to give it extra calcium that helps that situation. But you know, you can get a shot from the doctor, you can get the doc, you, you can give a shot to dry up the milk so that you can have that bottle feed, but she doesn't have so much milk production. But just if you've got a dog that has a temperature, time for, time for a vet trip anyway. Uh, how many minutes are we in? 26. 26. Uh, okay, food. What do we feed our dogs? We, especially with the big litters, mama can get pulled down really hard and she can start to show a backbone and look really skinny. Looks almost worrisome. Looks like she's like some kind of Auschwitz dog. Um, we give Bill Jack, B I L hyphen J A C, Bill Jack's a frozen product you can buy at Walmart. It comes in a kind of an orangey bag with red writing on it. Five pound bag, it's like eight bucks. They love it. So I give them as much food as they can possibly eat. I'll put a good dollop of cottage cheese or some powdered goat's milk on top of that every time that we feed them. And we give food to mama 24 seven. We leave food in the crate with the babies so she can eat and have water whenever she wants. Puppies, when can you start giving puppies food? Well, when they start having teeth or start to have nubs, you can start transitioning to uh, puppy food. What we like is Royal Canine Moose, puppy moose. It comes, it looks like a cat, fit, cat, um, cat food tin. It's not very big. And it's very, you know, it's consistency of mush. Uh, you could take uh, dried dog food and add goat's milk to it, warm it up, and smush it up. But you don't want chunks in it. Um, and if you've got, a, you've had to hand raise puppies. The sooner you can get them onto some solid food, the quicker and easier it is for you. So I would start introducing to that at maybe ten days to two weeks, and see if you can get them to start uh, taking some regular food. Um, Okay, then with puppies, shots and wormings. So first, wormings at two weeks, two, four, six, eight, every two weeks. We use Numex 2 for the first two and four weeks. Then we transition to Safeguard, Panicure, Fenzabenzadol, it's all the same thing. We transition to that after at six weeks. Shots at six weeks, nine weeks, 12 weeks. Some people do it every four weeks, we do it every three weeks. Talk to your vet about that, do a five in one shot. All right, there's a lot of stuff there. I mean, I've just raced through it. I hope that's helpful. Again, here we are, my breeder supply. Can you see that okay, Russ? So products to help you with all this would be at mybreedersupply.com. Uh, Love My Pups is where we are, which is where our stud service is. That's where we have lots of videos. This James at itlnet.net, that's my email address, and here's my phone number. If I can be of any help anytime, don't hesitate to call us. Uh, if you do call us in the middle of the night, I'm hoping it's an emergency, not, uh, not something that is just a casual conversation because my wife will get pretty upset. But uh, we are here to help you. And uh, if you like this video, then uh, subscribe to us and look at more of them and give us a thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, then tell us why. And uh, if you've got some questions, then ask those. We'll have a Q&A session every week in which we answer questions. And uh, we appreciate you taking the time to uh, spend 30 minutes uh, watching our videos. And uh, good luck with your breeding. Bye-bye, everybody.